We're also going to continue to make sure that we take on the uh, Afghan nationals who work side by side with U.S. forces, including interpreters and translators, since we're no longer going to have military there after this. We're not going to need them, and they have, have no jobs. We're also going to be vital to our efforts, so they — and they've been very vital, and so their families are not exposed to danger as well. We've already dramatically accelerated the procedure uh, time for special immigrant visas to bring them to the United States. Since I was inaugurated on January 20th, we've already approved 2,500 special immigrant visas to come to the United States. Up to now, fewer than half have exercised their right to do that. Half have gotten on aircraft and come — commercial flights and come, and other half believe they want to stay, at least thus far. We're working closely with Congress to change the authorization legislation so that we can streamline the process of approving those visas. And those who have stood up for the operation to physically relocate thousands of Afghans and their families before the U.S. military mission concludes so that if they choose, they can wait safely outside of Afghanistan while their U.S. visas are being processed. The operation has uh, identified U.S. facilities outside of the continental United States, as well as in third countries, to host our Afghan allies if they choose — if they so choose. And this, uh, starting this month, we're going to begin to re re reloc — we're going to be begin relocation flights for Afghanistan SIV applicants uh, uh, and their families who choose to leave. We have a point person in the White House and at the State Department-led task force coordinating all these efforts. But our message to those women and men is clear. There is a home for you in the United States, if you so choose, and we will stand with you just as you stood with us.